the sky, a place where no man previously had business occupying, and yet millions now traverse it every year. Even so, we're still continuously taken aback by its immense beauty and the sense of freedom that it gives us. This is why Microsoft Flight Simulator is so important, as it's bringing the skies of our world into our homes. This fascination with flight is truly being flown to new heights. To explain why I'm so amped for this sim, well, let me just say that my first word was bird. No, it's not a joke. I, like so many others, have an intense love of flight. Thus, it seemed only natural that I would end up getting hooked on simulators by the time I was a toddler. Fast forward to now at 22 years old, and I've clocked in countless hundreds of hours over the years. From FS2002 to 2004's A Century of Flight, and 2006's The Infamous X, where the series has remained stuck at for nearly two decades. Now, we have the next generation of Microsoft Flight Simulator. If the series has ever been more noteworthy of its tagline, as real as it gets, then that's this entry. It goes without saying that Microsoft Flight Simulator is pushing new boundaries with its visual presentation. Aside from the gorgeous aircraft models, what's the real showstopper here is the world that encapsulates them. Basically, every flight sim prior has relied on basic, flat textures to cover the planet and simple, auto-generated buildings to represent civilization. But now, we have full-on, completely dynamic, virtual recreation of planet Earth in its entirety. Powered by the satellite imagery of Bing Maps and the 3D map modeling tech from Black Shark AI, the World of Flight Simulator offers a near one-to-one -one representation of real life. Cities and towns, both large and small, are finally represented in detail we really haven't seen before in any flight sim prior. If you can recognize your own area from looking at a map, then you can navigate this high fidelity world that Microsoft Flight Sim has to offer. To test this, I took a flight over various islands of my own tiny country, the Bahamas. Even in a sparse place like this, the results left me with the biggest grin planted on my face. My home island of Grand Bahama, a place of about 30,000 people, is represented in a way that I could actually recognize. Buildings that I know, like restaurants, apartment complexes, resorts, and yes, even my own house are all there. However, zipping over even higher detail areas, known as photogrammetry areas, offer an even grander experience. I'm very familiar with the state of Florida, and have always enjoyed admiring its many lakes and gridded communities in real life. Here in Flight Simulator, now that same level of beauty can finally be realized, well, right here in my home. Cities like Orlando and its various amusement parks look nearly picture perfect and even the smaller backcountry swaths of land like River Ranch are exactly as they should be. That said, if you get exceptionally close, you will see a few oddities like a few unfinished 3D models and satellite imagery that went a bit wonky. But when you sit back and consider that this one simulator allows you to explore just about every nook and cranny of the known world, it's pretty easy to forgive these occasional hiccups especially when it's still all being dressed in the beauty of this game's graphical engine. Microsoft Flight Simulator not only eliminates the need for most scenery add-ons, but visual enhancements also need not apply. The lighting engine and special effects are on full display here. Little details like heat exhaust from planes engines make me chuckle, and larger details like the way clouds have an effect on the color of the sky and surrounding scenery have just left me gawking at my screen. Global illumination, light scattering, ambient occlusion, whichever effect and terminology mumbo jumbo you want to name, 
it's present here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. No matter the time of day, no matter the weather, or even the area, this sim looks like a work of art. Of course, to power all of this comes at a cost. My mid-range Acer Nitro 5 laptop is brought to its knees by this sim. At higher altitudes and smaller aircraft, hitting 60 FPS is relatively not a problem. But, of course, higher density areas at lower altitudes can bring things down a notch. At any given moment though, my sim hummed along at a, about a 30 to 40 FPS range, a performance target that most simmers are familiar with. I can't lie, there are a few times where it does chug along below that level, but because this sim was gracious enough to label my machine as high end, that's the reason. I'm sure if I knocked a few levers down, things would improve, but just look at this. This is a painting that I do not want to change. Of us have been focusing on the visuals, what you really want to know, of course, is how the actual flying experience is. I'm happy to report that after trying a bit of aircraft in the sim, Flight Simulator does really feel good. It blows past the on-rails mechanics that FSX had and falls about in line with the likes of modern competitors like X-Plane 11. Now to be blunt, I do find X-Plane 11 to be the more technical and arguably a little bit of the more authentic of the two from a flight model perspective, but that's only because the super complex add-on aircraft have yet to be released for the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Still, in terms of default aircraft, not only is Microsoft Flight Simulator superior, I just really like what's on offer here in general. There's a staggering amount of general aviation aircraft compared to that of airliners, yet they all still look, sound, and feel very good to fly. Weather has a really cool effect on each airplane. The wings of a giant like the Boeing 787 flex under pressure. Meanwhile, a smaller aircraft like the Beechcraft Baron will be jostled and bumped by the turbulence. It's oddly satisfying to see a plane drift, bounce, and sway as it maneuvers through the air, reminding you that you're just in a metal tube zooming through the atmosphere. This is a far cry from past entries in the series where aircraft sort of just hung about as they flew around. In the cockpit, while there are a few buttons and switches that have yet to be wired to anything, everything you need and expect to use is quite functional. Little things like the inability to open doors is a bit of a pet peeve, but really, for now, what my biggest gripe is is the twitchiness of the aircraft's rudder system, which affects every aircraft. It's just way too sensitive. Also, the autopilot can be a bit wonky as well. Regardless of which aircraft I was flying, the autopilot system has a haphazard behavior to it, where sometimes it works and other times it doesn't. Thankfully, I haven't crashed because of this, but I have made some landings which I'm not too proud of. But either way, when everything does work, which is about 80% of the time, it's a real joy to take the skies and see a world that's actually fully recognizable. And with all that said, this is still a product that will have support for the next several years. So, all things considered, this really is only just the beginning. So then, is Microsoft Flight Simulator worth all of the immense fanfare? Has it really spent all this time in hiatus to be actually worthy of a comeback? Will you get your money's worth? If you're somewhat familiar with the genre, then I'd say getting this would be a no-brainer, especially if you opt to do it through Xbox Game Pass. No other simulator before this or currently on the market comes out of the box in such a well-built state. For once, the vanilla version really is the bee's knees. And if you're a newcomer, this is still the best place to start. Other simulators like X-Plane 11 are not that forgiving to the casual player, but Flight Simulator on the other hand can be as easy or as technical as you want it to be. You can literally press a button and just have everything turn on and get to flying, or you can go knob by knob, lever by lever, if that's more your speed. Microsoft Flight Simulator has been a long time coming, but the wait has most certainly been worth it. After all my years of virtual flying, 
I didn't expect to be smiling like how I did all those years ago when I first found the virtual world of flying three years old. Man, it feels good to be back. <laughs>